Welcome to the NBA G League Takeover Show. We have Jason Thompson on the show today. Jason, first time we've had you on because it's the first time you've been a coach in the NBA G League. Welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. How does that feel for me to say, Coach Thompson? It's been good. Uh, this is my third year coaching overall. Um, after I retired after playing 14 years, um, and then I played, and then I coached um, two years at my alma mater at Rider University. Um, and then this is my first year in the G League, so looking forward to it, and it's, it's been a good start. So you mentioned Ryder. Tell me a little bit about that experience. You had your jersey retired there, first ballot, Hall of Famer there. Um, so I'm guessing that was an interesting and very cool opportunity to coach there. Yeah, it's um, obviously um, I owe a lot to that school because it made the, you know, the player and the man I am today. Um, I went all four years. Um, and then obviously got drafted in, in 2008 um, to, to Sacramento Kings. Um, and then, you know, I would <clears throat> I donated to the practice uh, facility, um, you know, and also, you know, the men's and women's, um, you know, locker rooms and, and offices. And I knew I wanted to get back at some point. Um, so then, you know, during my off seasons, I'll be training at the facilities. And, um, you know, the players started gravitating to me, you know, just preparing for my seasons, you know, uh, for my off seasons and things like that. And just how we were running the workouts, running the drills, um, running, running the uh, the pickup games. Um, you know, eventually I had a great uh, relationship with the uh, head coach, Kevin Baggett, who was assistant coach when I was playing. Um, so kept in contact and. He was like, you know, when you're done, you want to, when you want to hang them up, you know, we would love to have you here on the staff. So, uh, you know, we had two great years and, uh, you know, looking forward to this opportunity now. 14 seasons in the NBA. You played five seasons overseas. Um, most of your time spent in Sacramento. So you have a lot of experience. What is your favorite moment when you look back on all of it? Um, it's a, it's a lot of moments. I mean, I'm, you know, I'll never think I'll be the longest tenured in King's history. Um, you know, just having seven coaches in seven years is a lot just to to deal with that. And nowadays, you know, that's kind of unheard of. So I just think that for me to, um, you know, get through those challenges and still become an NBA veteran <clears throat> uh, before I went uh, to play overseas in China, Spain and Turkey. Um, so, I would just say, like, you know, like I said, being being durable, uh, a bunch of my years in the NBA, I was able to play all 82 games, um, you know, throughout those eight years. Uh, I got to make the playoffs when I was with the Toronto Raptors. So we got to the Eastern Conference Finals um, and lost to the Cavaliers, who ended up winning uh, the championship that year. Um, you know, so just I have a lot of fond memories, a lot of teammates, unfortunately, a lot of coaches. Um, but that's one thing that I think that, uh, helps me being a coach because, you know, I'm not just telling those things. I've experienced it. And what a better way to teach my player something that I've gone through. Obviously, becoming an NBA player had to have been a dream of yours. So then you realize that dream. Now, while you're playing, are you thinking about your next step? And when it's getting closer to retirement, are you thinking, hey, I definitely want to be a coach? Or how did that come about in your mind? Yeah, I mean, I think Later on, um, I started hitting the injury bug a little bit, and I was blessed to be able to stay healthy, you know, throughout my career. And, you know, I was just looking at different things, you know, making investments and seeing if I wanted to be an active, you know, after retirement or, uh, you know, still try to find ways to still be around the game. Um, and, you know, I had done my camps overall. Like I had my camps that started out in Sacramento um, in 2008. And, you know, just teaching, you know, I, I'm one thing I always wanted to have a focal point was always being there. So I just didn't have my camp and giving back to the kids, but I would be there every day, uh, be there active, you know, teaching guys certain drills, even if it was the counselors as well, because I'm teaching them, you know, most of them were coming, you know, pros or, or college guys or high school guys, but, you know, they're teaching the young kids. So I just think that, you know, I was always teaching at some point. I didn't know what level I wanted to do. Um, but I think, you know, for the most part, uh, having that college experience was good. I, I was able to get my master's in sports management as well. So kind of killing two birds with one stone. Um, and then I joined the NBA coaching developmental program, um, which taught me a lot. And that's when I knew I kind of wanted to see how it was at the pro level and, and kind of, you know, welcome myself back to that. So once I uh, passed that, um, then I started getting some interviews and then uh, the Sky Force hired me. 
And so we're only, you know, a handful or so games into the season. What's the biggest thing that you've learned about coaching that you didn't expect? Like something that caught you off guard? You're like, oh, man, OK, this is what coaching is all about. Yeah, You mean coaching in general or coaching in coaching the G League? In the G League. Yeah, so I would think number one would be uh, the call-ups um, and then how, you know, the two ways and all those things, um, situations happen, right? You know, we have uh, two-way players, Josh Christopher and, and Kashad Johnson. Um, and then, like I said, I have one of my first scouts. You know, we had five new players. So I was preparing for a team with certain players, and then they had five guys, um, five new guys. So, you know, you're doing your research on them, looking at film, looking at tapes and stuff, um, things of that sort. Um, so that's definitely something that I, I had to get used to. Um, and also, you know, my first G League uh, coaching experience, you know, we played, you know, the Iowa Wolves on the road. Um, so I got to experience now, you know, I think they changed the rule and now it's one free throw uh, for two points and one free yeah. free throw for three points, um, which is something new. And then my, my first experience as well was overtime. So we went to overtime with them and then it was target score like it is for TBT. Uh, so I pretty much got a, a dose of everything all in one game. Um, and like I said, I'm just learning each and every day. So as you're experiencing this the first time in the NBA and NBA G League ranks, uh, what do you foresee for your future? Are you going for longevity as a coach or are you feeling things out? Where are you at? Yeah, I mean, I, I like what I'm doing. Um, you know, perfect world. You know, we'll see how it is, you know, if you continue it to go at the NBA level as well. I, I love um, – one thing I love about being here is um, how close we are with the Heat. And, you know, with our players and, and making sure our players are ready forever, um, you need to be called up. You know, there is no, hey, I'm not sure what they're doing. You know, we're all on the same page and we're all communicating at the same time. So I felt like during the interview process, that was one thing that I thought was really important over the last two years. The Sky Force has uh, led the G in uh, call ups. Um, so I thought that was real big as well, too. Um, so, like I said, if it's, you know, getting back to the NBA as well. Um, and then, you know, later down the line, maybe 10, 20 years from now, being in the front office, um, you know, would be kind of a dream as well, too. So uh, just taking one day at a time, learning each uh, each and every day and absorbing all the information like a sponge. So you're trying to stay around the game for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I, I'm enjoying it now, um, you know, but like I said, I don't ever want to have that time where, you know, you're in the mix, you're enjoying it. and you get older and you have any regrets of, of leaving the game. So I'm still around the game and still youthful and still being able to play <laughs> from time to time with the players as well, too. So I want to keep the youth going. You mentioned the parent club for the Sky Force, the Miami Heat. They are the gold standard when it comes to development. And so you get to be a part of that process and a, a part of a culture that has really just, like I said, set the standard. How fortunate do you feel to be a part of something like that at getting your first NBA G League coaching opportunity? Yeah, I think it's it's great. Um, you know, I started, you know, in the off season to kind of learning how they go. Um, I just think even analyzing it as a player, you know, I never in Sacramento, I never got to experience that type of culture with coaches still being there in the off seasons and stuff. You know, I would come back to the practice gym and it, I have to turn the lights on myself. Um, so I just think that like knowing that having that type of culture, knowing that your coaches have your back and, and know the improvements that you need to do and, and continue to work on the things that you're great at as well. Um, and not have to worry about any outside noise and stuff like that. I was able to go to training camp with them in the Bahamas, which was a great experience as well, too. Um, and just how small the world is, you know, knowing, you know, Kevin Love was my draft class and him, uh, you know, still being in the NBA, obviously him being younger. But that was actually my first game uh, was against was against Kevin Love. So we just had some laughs and stuff like that, too. So it kind of shows you how small the NBA world is and knowing too where, you know, everything is sometimes it's not about what you know, it's who you know as well too. When you are talking to some of the players, so obviously being a, a 12th pick, you know, you have a wealth of experience, but you also have the experience of what it's like just trying to get your name out there, going through the draft process. I mean, there are some draft eligible guys in the G league right now, but 
you're going to be dealing with younger players who are just entering the waters of being a professional. What are you telling them when you're giving advice as a coach, but, you know, kind of as someone that has obviously been through it? Yeah, knowing that um, one, Rome wasn't built in one day. Also knowing, too, that you're going to have adversity. It's easy uh, to be rah rah when things are going good. But then when you hit that wall, um, you know, that's where, you know, you find the real character in yourself. Um, everyone has issues maybe off the court, if it's with family or friends and stuff, but you can't bring that onto the court. Um, you got to be able to lock in and focus um, and know that don't try and do things on your own as well. That's why you have coaches. That's why you have, you know, different people in the organization to be able to handle those situations um, because a lot of guys are like, Hey, I average, you know, this amount of points in college. Then they come to the G and stuff and think they're going to do the same, but you got to fill a role and everybody can't shoot the ball 20, 25 times, but what can you do on your team to be valuable? You know, I always tell my players, you know, you got to be good at two or three things um, to be able to stick, you know. So for some guys, if it's re uh, rebounding, blocking shots and high energy, uh, for some guys, it's high three-point percentage, um, assists um, and rebounding. You know, it's, you know, pick two or three things and not try and do 10 things solid or, you know, amazing. If you do two or three things solid to, and get better and better each and every day, then you'll be able to fill the rest of the holes as you go. Oh, who should we look out for on the Sioux Falls Sky Force? Who's, who's a player that you're like, man, this dude need to be up? <laughs> man, I mean, I, I think uh, Kashad Johnson has re has really been doing great uh, things um, on both ends. You know, he can play the four and the five, very versatile, can shoot the three, very athletic. Um, Josh Christopher has a lot of talent as well. Almost was flirting with a triple double last game. Can really shoot the ball. Won MVP in summer league um, in Vegas. Um, so you see his potential. Uh, we have Nas Little, who played, um, you know, for the Suns and the and the Trailblazers. Um, and you know he's athletic. He can really shoot, score the ball as well too. Um, so and then we have a vet in Tony Snell as well too. Um, you know who's who's been there, done that, but a, just a great leader for the, for the young guys on this team. Um, you have Malik Williams, who's on the USA team, uh, just as well as Tony. Uh, so we got a bunch, we got so a bunch got a of list. guys. You pick no one. Say, you got, gave me a got, list. Got, I'm giving, <laughs> hey, I'm giving you all this. this that's what I'm hey. saying. I'm, I, I want to put the NBA on radar that we got, we got some dolls. We got some guys <laughs> on here. Isaiah Stevens is second in assist. Why don't you just um, say the entire roster at this point? I, I mean, okay, hey, I, I got. I was you. trying to. I was trying to get kudo points to to showing love to my guys too. So everybody's been doing good. We've been putting the work in, and, and the results are showing. On your journey, who are you getting advice from? I mean, obviously, people probably want to know: Have you talked to Eric Spolstra? Who in the professional coaching ranks has given you the best advice? And maybe what advice was that? Yeah, it's crazy how, you know, the basketball world is small and it comes in full circle where Malik Allen uh, with the Miami Heat, um, you know, we're from the same area in South Jersey. He went to Villanova, kept in contact all these years, played, you know, in the NBA as well. Um, and yeah, like I said, I always would get certain advice, you know, from him. You know, I worked at his camps and stuff and, uh, you know, learned a lot from him during that time in the off season. Um, in Miami and then also uh, in training camp, um, a certain stuff that he did. Um, he's been with the Heat. He's been, um, I think, with the Orlando Magic and then also the Detroit Pistons. So um, he's been, you know, preferably a bunch of teams that, uh, you know, have been well known. And and like I said, what a better guy to, to try to get advice from. So like I said, anytime, I'm sure I, you know, I annoy him and stuff, but, you know, like I said, it's just something that, um, you know, well-respected guy around the league as a player and especially as a coach. Um, and then, you know, it's crazy how, you know, full circle moment. I want you to give me fill in the blank. So Jason Thompson as a player is blank. Jason Thompson as a coach is blank. So only one word answer. You want to give me a couple. You want to give me a sentence. That's fine. But if you're you saying wanna... Jason Thompson, the player is a dog. Like... I don't know. Well, oh, OK, OK. Give All me right. a definition. Right. Who are you as a player right. and who are you as a coach? <clears throat> I got you. All right, go. Oh, I thought you were like, this is like. <laughs> no, a, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. We'll, we'll, so, re yeah, we'll you, redo so, it. We'll redo it. But I felt like you got to ask Jason. Like, I can't say my name. Let's in third keep person. this in the interview. Don't edit this out. 
Uh, all right, all right, all right. Jason Thompson as a player is uh, Iron Man, Mr. Double Double. Mr. Double Double. Jason Thompson as a coach is the OG that can walk his talk. Oh, I feel like that's that's something players respect because you hear it all up and down like, oh, he couldn't even do that or she could, whatever right. it is. But um, you're like, no, I've been there, done that. Uh, and can still and can still do it. <laughs> and can still get it. You play one v one with someone during practice. I want to see that. If you if that for happens, sure. give us the film. JT, I'll give you the exclusive for sure. Thank you, thank you so much for being on the NBA G League Takeover Show. We'll catch you later on at Winter Showcase and see how you're doing. Catch you next time. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.